Yes, good and ready to infuse all those feel-good vibes into your morning on this Tuesday. Thank you so much. So good to have your company. Now, it's time for us to chat all things yes. medical because yes. it is a Tuesday. Now, yes. as the largest organ um, our bodies have, healthy skin is very important for more than just getting the perfect selfie. Acne is a skin condition that occurs when your hair follicles become plugged with oil and uh, dead skin cells. And so depending on its severity, acne can cause emotional distress and scar the skin. And here to help us unpack the cause and symptoms of the skin condition is trusted dermatologist, Dr. Altaf Parker. Good to have you. Uh, thanks, yeah. Dr. Parker, shall we begin at the beginning before sure. we delve into it anymore? Yeah. What exactly is acne? acne? Okay, so acne is a long-term or chronic disease yeah. um, that affects, as you said, you know, the hair follicle unit. Yeah. It's a very inflammatory and it affects the face, the, you know, the chest, the shoulders and the back. Mm -hmm. Um, and unfortunately, it actually affects 80% of normal people. So in fact, most people will have acne in the entire lifetime, you know. You're very, very lucky to not have acne, for example. Very true, yeah. 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 And yeah. We, I think most of us encounter it when we start getting into our teenage teenagers. Teenagers, yes. yes. absolutely. Adolescence comes absolutely. in, yeah. hormone fluctuations. So uh, let's talk yeah. about the cause then. Sure, of, sure, of sure. It. You were talking, we were talking about the hair sure. follicles and the buildup of dirt and oil. Yeah, so you've actually summarized it very well. Mm. Um, that is essentially the cause. Um, as you can see over there, for example, mm. Um, factors that occlude or close off that little pore of the hair follicle um, causes acne, and these are hormonal factors, yeah. um, excess oil, for example, yeah. um, inflammation around that area. And what that then causes is essentially that sort of buildup of oil and dead skin cells and bacteria, which then cause the inflammation, which you can see at the end, which then causes, of course, the scarring and the pigmentation specifically in our population in South Africa. Yeah. Um, so it's quite a debilitating disease, as you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. When, when the doctor says build up of oil, I think of like growing up where the shinier your face was, the, the, the healthier you look, because like our yeah. parents used to yeah. put petroleum jelly on, <laughs> and then you'd shine, you're like, ha, ah, healthy skin. Yeah. It's quite yeah. the opposite. Not necessary. So, so a healthy glow is important. The problem is you, you don't want the oil underneath your skin, you want it sort of, you know, somewhere okay, else. Okay, yeah, okay, absolutely. okay. Can we talk about the yeah. symptoms, though? Sure, sure. So um, as you know, I mean, patients have pimples, you know, yes. um, which then causes scarring and pigmentation. Yes. Um, it's often sort of, um, well, painful, um, yeah. especially the cystic acne, for example. Yes. Um, and there's many grades of acne. Um, but I mean, yesterday, in fact, I saw a patient where there was such, such large cysts on their back that they were actually bleeding through their shirt. So oh, it can wow. go from sort of very minimal sort of comedones, little blackheads and whiteheads on the nose, for example, to sort of full, you know, full blown cystic acne, yeah. um, which is extremely painful in some yeah. cases. Yeah. And from what wow. you've seen in practice, what, what does yeah. this do other than, yeah. you know, the physical pain that yeah. patients sometimes suffer yeah. and emotional? So, so we're in a sort of new generation of Instagram and mm. Facebook and you know the, the selfie so there's, there's a huge pressure on patients you know to obviously look perfect as you know yeah. um, and the pigmentation specifically and the scarring the scarring unfortunately can last a lifetime yeah. yeah there's a lot of things we can do for scarring though but that's what we fear I mean acne is easy to treat I mean you could literally cure a patient in a few in a few consultations wow. but the scarring really takes a long time to sort out so we try to treat them as soon as possible and quickly yeah. to prevent scarring essentially yeah sure yeah Oh, while we're chatting all things acne, of course, we know that the skin is the largest organ and it's something that we want to take care of in this new age of social media and digital <laughs> media. Everybody wants to take a good mm -hmm. selfie. I certainly do. Uh, we're going to be talking about acne and how it can be treated after this with our guest health specialist, Dr. Parker, today. Cool. It's my feel-good breakfast show. All right, we're back again with Dr. Parker, and it's Medical Chat Tuesday. Yes. And today, the topic of discussion is all about acne. Ah, oh, yeah. those breakouts that not only affect our, the largest organ in our body, the skin, but can also have uh, disaster, co disastrous consequences mm -hmm. in terms of our emotions yes. and how it affects how you perceive okay. yourself. And of course, the confidence that, that it goes associated with that as well. So you've spoken about the symptoms, what mm -hmm. causes it, what it is. But let's first now, uh, in this segment, speak about how acne is treated. Yeah. In practice. Okay, all right. So the first thing is we need to grade acne. Um, mm. And you get sort of mild, moderate, and severe acne. Mm. Um, and for every grade of acne, there's a different treatment. So for mild acne, sort of your blackheads and your whiteheads, you know, your very minimal pimples, very small pimples, um, often those patients would start off with a cream. Um, and most creams would contain retinol, which most of our viewers have heard about. So retinol, retinoids, is mm -hmm. the backbone of acne therapy. Um, that obviously is applied topically, um, and that shows good effect. Um, as they escalate up severity to sort of moderate acne, 
that you then sort of add sort of oral medication, such mm -hmm. as starting off with antibiotics, very, very low dose antibiotics, uh, minimal side effects, um, sometimes up to three months every day. Um, and that's sort of there to aim to reduce the inflammation, sort of redness around the pimple. Um, and of course, then in your most severe cases, your sort of cystic acne, you know, your, your very inflammatory acne, um, those patients sometimes would then use things like oral retinoids, which are essentially what we know as Roaccutane, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of the escalation of it. Backbone therapy is always retinol. The exception, however, is in the pregnant patient. She cannot ever use retinol during pregnancy. It's totally contraindicated. But I think the, the sort of summary is that when a patient has acne, um, from a week-to-week -week basis, they should see improvement dr dramatically, essentially. Yeah. And if not, then we need to sort of relook. Yeah. We've got a caller on the line right now sure. on zero two one four three zero nine double eight one Valencia from Cape Town. Good morning, Valencia. Good morning, and how are you? Very well. Thank you so much for the call. What is your comment or your question? Thank you. Um, my question is just: I would like to know. I've got a fourteen-year-old daughter, um, and she's got quite severe acne. Um, we've tried, you know, various uh, skin creams and things that I've bought from the pharmacy and also a diet we've tried to change and, you know, um, but it just doesn't seem to be working. I don't know if it's maybe just because of our hormones or if it's, but it just seems to be getting worse and worse. And I haven't taken her to a dermatologist as yet because I thought, that, you know, I'll maybe first try and see maybe it's just something like a diet or something that needs to be changed. But I think she's got a, a, a lot of oily, you know, her skin is quite oily also, yes. Yeah. All right. So yeah. let's so talk about what Valencia can sure. do at home at the sure. moment. Sure. So this is a typical 14-year-old. She probably developed acne a few years ago. Yeah. Started as mild yeah. and now has sort of progressed, yeah. you know, to severe acne. Um, her mom has tried the topical creams, which, which probably worked a little bit, but not enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, depending on the severity, she probably would then start or begin to start oral therapy, which is either the low-dose antibiotic, uh, possibly Roaccutane, possibly a hormonal you know, treatment as well to, to sort of tackle that also. Yeah. Um, the, the issue here is that, again, I don't want to worry about acne. Acne can be treated quickly. That's not the problem. The problem really is the sequelae or the consequences like pigmentation. Yeah. Um, and also scarring. And especially in a young patient, she's going to live with that for four years. Yeah. So that's always my worry. It's the complications. The acne is easy. Yes. You know, so, yeah. 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 All right. Well, we're going to continue our medical chat with Dr. Parker uh, shortly, yeah. where we discuss acne even more. And you can give us a call on 021-430-9881 with all of your calls and questions. It's my feel good Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. It's Medical Tuesdays, and we're discussing the issue of acne and, of course, all of the symptoms and all of the situations that comes with it. Our medical expert, Dr. Mm. Alta Parker, is here. And, Dr. Parker, I wanted mm. to know from you, because yeah. I know when I'm eating badly mm. and I get a breakout, how much worse for someone mm. who does suffer from mm. acne? Does a bad diet seem to escalate yeah. the symptoms that... Uh, Sure. Come with acne. So it's quite a controversial question, and a lot yes. of literature has gone into that in studies, etc. Um, but what we found is that sort of a high glycemic or high sort of sugar, you know, carbohydrate diet um, uh, sort of promotes the severity of acne. It may not yeah. cause it, but it, it will certainly make it severe. Yeah. Um, sort of via the insulin pathway. So patients that are insulin resistant, okay. um, for example, we often see you know more severe acne, and we really those are challenging patients. So we also do tackle diet yeah. um, as part of that. Um, it was a funny study actually showing, you know, controversial that skim milk, you know, possibly could cause it as well. We what? don't know why. Hmm. Skim milk. But there's nothing in it. I know, but it was a study published, <laughs> you know, and milk. that's just <laughs> what was published. But um, I would think in general, sort of a healthy diet is important. Okay. Yeah. Um, hydration, obviously, for the, for the clarity of skin. Yes. Um, and then just watch your sugars, you know, because that yeah. really promotes insulin resistance. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Green plates mm. and clear liquids for 2019. Yes. Talk about uh, yeah. wearing makeup. We do that every single day sure. yeah, uh, for, our for our job. But <laughs> people that have acne, that yeah. uh, should they stay away from doing stuff like yeah. wearing makeup? So, so it depends. That's a good question. So there's two types of makeups in the acne world. There's what we call comedogenic and non-comedogenic. In other words, comedos means that you're forming acne. So some makeups will help to form acne and okay. some will not. 
So when patients go to the, you know, the, the therapists, et cetera, the beauticians, et cetera, and choosing makeups, ask the therapist specifically for a non-comedogenic makeup. And there are brands, you know, which I can't mention, but they, they will provide that. That's very, very important. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Dr. Parker, we've got a caller from the Eastern Cape. Sure. Mike is currently on the line. Good morning, Mike. What is your question or comment for Dr. Parker? Good morning, all of you. Hi. Good morning, Dr. Parker. I've had a problem with my with my skin on my wrists and on my knees and calves. Yeah. Um, it's skin is getting like very brittle and very dry, extremely dry. Um, I've tried some of the cream, the aqueous creams, um, uh, but it's, it's not clearing up. On my calves. The, the skin looks like a tortoise shell kind of finish. Um, so they have, it's, it's not swollen, but it, in the sun it stings. Yeah. It, it doesn't itch so much. All right. Thanks very much for that Thank call you, and the question, uh, Mike, Dr. Yeah. Parker. So that's definitely not acne, because uh, okay. you see mentioned the arms, you know, the calves and so on, and tortoise shell skin. So acne, face, chest, back, shoulders. Um, that very much sounds like eczema, okay. chronic eczema, um, and again, that's something that you know you should see your dermatologist for. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, that is not acne. Yeah. You know, so yeah. If we mm. talk about maybe some some home treatments, because I mean, mm. it sounds like he's saying in, in the sun mm. it stings. Sure. Some sure. home remedies or home well, treatments, yeah. you know, before he gets to go to the dermatologist. Sure, that sure, could help sure, sure. With the e easing, easing. Okay, the so pain. for chronic eczema, um, aqueous cream, not a great moisturizer. Maybe something thicker if yeah. you can get it hold. Hit his hands on that. Mm -hmm. um, a topical cortisone usually works. Um, stay out of the sun because that triggers eczema as well. Yeah. But of course, you know, see a medical doctor, you know, yeah. to confirm the diagnosis and obviously to yeah. confirm the treatment. But that's what it sounds like yeah. you know, over the phone. Yeah. I hear a lot of people, especially with our mm. callers, they're saying they tried this, tried this, tried mm. this, tried that. Mm. When is it time to see a dermatologist? Sure. So again, I, like I said, I think if things don't work within three weeks or even two weeks, yeah. you know, if you're not seeing improvement, then something's not something's not working. So. Yeah. See, perhaps even see your general practitioner. Um, I mean, there's about 200 of us in the country of 50 million people, so unfortunately yeah. we can't see everyone. Of course. But uh, start out with your general practitioner, um, your family doctor, you know, um, see what they can provide. And if that also doesn't work within a few weeks, you know, then progress on to the dermatologist. Because like I said, acne, it's easy. It's really not difficult. The challenging part is the scarring, you know, the yeah. types of scarring. Um, each little scar needs its own treatment. Wow. Um, the problem with scarring and acne is that as you actually age, the scarring gets worse. Of course, um, because yeah. your, your collagen in your skin thins, mm. the, the scars become more prominent. Mm. Um, so we, yeah, that's essentially really where we come in is you know, also acne scarring. Yeah. Sure, where's mm. my green smoothie at? <laughs> uh, but Dr. Parker, thank you very yeah. much for joining awesome. us on this Tuesday. And if you'd like Thanks more so. information, you can visit www.parkerdermatologycapetown.co.za. Awesome.